So welcome to data cleansing and processing part one. So we are going to see what is the need for cleansing the data in the following slides. So before we proceed with building a predictive model, that is the purpose of data science, right? We collect data and then we build a predictive model which predicts a value for dependent variable. So, but before we start doing that, we need uh, to collect the data and then cleanse it. Basically, cleaning part itself takes 70 to 80% of uh, before whatever the process we do before building a predictive model, that itself takes 80% of our time effort, right from uh, getting the data, cleaning it, preparing it, processing it for model building. That's why this part is very, very important. And we need to have data without error. Only then we can uh, build a effective predictive model. So after getting an overview of data, which we saw in understanding of data, we must clean it and then process it. So data always has some quality issue. You know, it, it has like missing values, mismatch of data. For example, in a uh, numerical variable, you may find uh, some values which are like uh, characters, you know, so we need to look at all those aspects. So then a lot of numerical variables have different scaling. For example, uh, one variable may have a scale from 0.1 to 1, you know, maybe 0 to 1. So it can vary from 0, 0 0.1, 0.9 like that while the other variable may be in thousands and yet another variable may be in millions you know so we need to scale them you know so that is another way to clean the data and prepare it for model building so to bring all the numerical variables uh, to the same scale which is talking about this uh, we standardize the data we'll see how to standardize data later and then identifying outliers you know and taking appropriate action based on the domain uh, knowledge and the, you know, the uh, inputs from the domain experts. Then there could be some other uh, industry or subject matter specific issues as well with the data which we need to look into. So handling missing data. So one way of doing it is uh, like, you know, we omit uh, the missing values. That's what we are going to look at in this slide. So omitting the rows if a very small portion of data has missing values. So let's say there are like uh, hundreds of rows, but only uh, two or three rows have got missing values. So instead of finding a value for those missing values, we straight away uh, erase or delete those uh, rows from the data. And we can also drop variables, not just the rows, but also variables. Let's say some variables have got a lot of missing values, so they do not play any important role or key role in building a model so we straight away get rid of those uh, variables again we do these uh, we take these actions only after consulting the subject matter expert or the domain expert now let's look at one example here so exp means uh, experience so this is the experience level 12 years 31 year 30 years na is a missing value so i've just put in na2 na here another uh, variable is the name of the employees you know and other people then third variable is income in k k means thousand so like 40,000 60,000 likewise and I put in one uh, character variable you know so this is a mismatch actually this is a numerical variable and there we have one entry which has some value triple a which mean makes no sense so we convert this into as dot numeric so as dot numeric is a function to convert a, a variable into numeric so because of this what R will do is it will convert this entire variable into a character variable. So we need to do this. And then R will turn this into NA basically. So we'll convert it into a data frame by using data.frame function. And so experience, name, and income in thousand. Strings as factors, false. We are not uh, you know reading data as factors as of now. So complete dot cases function, what it does is it gives you all uh, the uh, the it displays the result like this. So trues means uh, the first row, like all the values are there. There are no missing value. Then second index again true. Third index false index means there is one, at least one variable has got a missing value in this row. So that is what it means. So you can see here one, two, three, four. So fourth has got na. Now again, if you see five, six. So six again has got na here. Seven. There is no na here. 
but in here this is the seventh one, seventh row here one two three four five six sorry this is the six and this is the seventh i believe this is the seventh and then it goes on like this so data and then in the bracket if you put uh, not sign in complete dot cases data what it does is it displays all the rows with missing values basically so and if you want to uh, uh, re so this is the function we use na dot omit it will omit all the rows having uh, missing values and therefore you get a new variable without missing value this is how you do the omission in uh, uh, in a data actually you omit all the rows with missing values so other than uh, uh, deleting all the rows with missing values we can also use imputation what we do is basically we replace the missing values with some number so the simplest way is to replace numerical variables the missing values in numerical variables with mean or median and in categorical variable with mod so we'll look at one example with the example we saw in the previous slide so experience and we calculate the mean of experience uh, by using the function mean uh, na dot rm argument is basically uh, if it is true then it will ignore all the missing values and then calculate means if it is false then will it will also consider uh, na it doesn't make sense to consider missing values so we put it true make it true so this is the value we get now we'll do the same thing for the income same argument and we get 60 uh, thousand i believe then we can we find out the indices of all the missing values in in both the variables so there is a function called is dot na it gives us the indices in the form of true and false so wherever you have missing value it will show true wherever you don't have missing value it will show false and then we replace all the missing values with uh, mean that we calculated here so in the square packet we put this index and it will automatically replace all the missing values with mean same we do with the uh, income as well so we uh, we uh, we just find out the indices and then we replace the missing values with mean now we can also do the same uh, thing using uh, median instead of mean so we just use median here same median function and same argument and we get the 26 year as a median for experience and uh, 57.6 thousand median me, is median for income right so we and then we use the same process with which we did here uh, we have already uh, found out the indices for missing values in experience so we are just replacing that with median and for income again we are doing the same so now let's uh, see how to deal with uh, the categorical variable so missing value in categorical variable so I've just created a dummy variable here with the names like Raj, Ajay, Raj, and then there's one missing value here, then one more missing value here, and then third missing value here. So this is a categorical variable I've just created for sample. So what we do in this is we uh, we uh, uh, we create the table out of this variable, right? So what this does is it gives us the number of times each cat each character has been repeated. You see. Uh, only Raj has been repeated twice. So here Raj and Raj and rest all have been just uh, used once. So which dot max function will give you the the uh, basically uh, the name of that variable or sorry the value of that uh, variable which has been repeated maximum number of times. So only Raj has been repeated twice and that, that therefore this is the max value in this table. So we are using this which dot max function for the table, right? That we created here, and this five basically it is the index. So what this table does is it it arranges these characters or these uh, categorical values in a, in an alphabetical order. That's why Raj has got the fifth uh, index here. So this is what it's showing here. Now we want the mode, right? Mode means the value which has been repeated maximum number of times in a categorical variable, right? So then we can use names function and uh, to we, we are in, not interested in the index, we are interested in this value, Raj, right? So to get that, we we use names function here. So if you use name fu names function on this value, it will give us this Raj. So this is what we are getting here. So mode will give you this.
and then what we do is we we again find out the index in of this uh, of this variable which have missing values right the na basically so there are three nas we have put in here so this is what we are going to get index so as i told you in the previous slide that what this does this is.na function does is it gives all the indices in the form of trues and false so wherever you see false that means there is no missing value wherever you see true that means there is a missing value in that particular index so in that particular row so there are three missing values here here and here right so what we do is again we use the same method we we take the variable in the square bracket we put this index and assign it mode so all the trues will get replaced by mode so mode is raj here right so we'll see so the fourth eighth and 14th indices will get replaced with raj you see raj is the original in the original data first one is also raj now fourth is raj then again uh, eighth where is the eighth is raj and again 14th is raj this is how we do uh, we impute, we do the imputation in categorical variable for missing values. Now there are some other methods also for uh, imputation, and uh, they are little advanced but simple to implement. So there is something called random imputation. Uh, what we do is we replace the missing values with the sample random value. Basically, we from the same variable. This is uh, what we do is instead of mean or uh, median. What we do is we uh, use some value from the same variable and uh, randomly we pick up and then replace this missing values. So you see here uh, we have created a small function here which takes only one argument and that argument is the variable itself. And then we use is dot na function to find out the the indices of the missing values, right? And then if we sum this up, this id. It will give you the number of missing values because this is trues and false. So all the trues are ones, all the false are zero. So sum will function will give the uh, the total number of missing values because all trues will become one. So this is what it is doing here. Now we are just copying the this variable uh, without missing values, right? So id has all the indices of missing values. Not id means or only the uh, the 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 variable the rows which have uh, actual values and not missing values so we are just picking up those values so we are uh, creating a new variable which has only uh, actual values from the original variable without missing values now second one is uh, again we are just replicating or copying creating another uh, copy of the same variable because we don't want to mess around with this we want to return this value in the function and then what we are doing is uh, see this is nothing but the same original variable and in the square bracket we are using this indi index right in uh, which which is uh, which is the which gives the indices of all the missing values and we are using sample function here to generate the random uh, values so it picks up randomly uh, the total number of values from the original variable uh, uh, depending on how many missing values we have so this is what it is doing here and then what it does is it, it returns this particular variable by replacing all the missing values with some very values from the same variable so this is a simple function you can go through it and it's a and try to understand what's happening here so there is another uh, there there are many more methods so we'll discuss one more imputation method here which is uh, which requires a little bit of understanding of machine learning, I believe, and uh, uh, linear regression or classification mode. But, but we'll just go through the steps and not go through any code here because we haven't discussed linear regression and classification methods uh, so far. So basically it's iterative predictive model method what replacing missing values with predicted values. So what we do is either you ignore or replace the missing values with the mean mode or median in the first step this is what you do then you predict the missing values using a predictive model linear regression or classification models and then replace the missing values uh, in the original variable uh, with the predicted values now when we are building this model predictive model the rows uh, sorry the variable with missing values becomes dependent variable and all the other variables become independent variables right and that's how we do the prediction then we rebuild now after replacing the missing values with predicted values 
we rebuild the model again using uh, this new data and uh, again we predict the values for the missing values and again we replace those missing values with the the new predicted value and we repeat the above steps until we do not see any improvement in the predicted values for those missing values so this is till it converges until it converges we keep doing this process so this is another method of you know in, uh, doing imputation implementing imputation for missing values so what you can do is you can if you want you can try writing a, um, the code for the this particular method in whichever language or whichever you are comfortable with then processing categorical variable what we do is like you know in uh, before we use any uh, uh, data we have to convert those uh, uh, all the variables into uh, you know a numerical variable values basically so anyways numerical variables will remain in the numerical will have numerical values but categorical variables will have uh, values as characters strings you know so we need to look into that what we need to do about those categorical variables that's what we're going to look at here so what we do is we convert uh, or transform the categorical variables into m minus 1 dummy variable so m represents the total number of values in a categorical variable we'll see how it works and each dummy variable takes the values 0 or 1 so but the only problem with this method is that if there is there is a very large number m that means there are a lot of values different values in a categorical variable then we'll have that many minus one uh, dummy variables that would be a very large number and that can create a lot of problem in model building if you have too many variables then there is again a problem so that is called curse of uh, dimensionality so there is another uh, that will discuss later so i have taken one simple example here so first is employee second is rating so these are the names of the employees and these are ratings there are three ratings high average low average so only three and each uh, em employee has got some rating here so how to convert this into a dummy variable so what we do is uh, since it's uh, there are three so three becomes m so m minus one so we need to create two dummy variables so you see here the uh, I picked up high average you can also take uh, low average or you can take uh, uh, high low whatever you like you know depending on your choice and then uh, so since Raj has got high so high becomes gets one and average gets zero zero and Sam has got uh, average so high gets zero and every average, average gets one likewise Ajay has got low so high zero average is zero again so your R will understand that. Uh, so what the, what happens to low? Low becomes your reference point for for in a, in a, when we creating dummy variables like this. So in in the case of Anil, then uh, he's got average. So average gets one and high gets zero. So likewise we go on. So this is how we create dummy variable, and then we can use these variables for model building. So how to handle outliers? We've already discussed outliers in the previous video, which is which is basically outlier is nothing but an ex extreme observation in a data set. And uh, it is important to detect an outlier because as we discuss, it can be an error or it can be the story itself. So here is one example. I've just taken like, you know, created one sample. Uh, the value varies from 0.1 to 2 incremented by 0.2. And so uh, we are we are taking the data set of 20 data points actually and i've added one outlier here 2.5 because it is beyond two so and then if you do the box plot this is what we are getting see this is the outlier 2.5 here and then if you use this function bo box plot dot stats x out or uh, dollar out this gives you displays the outlier so you get this 2.5 when you type this in your r and then uh, there is another function method to find out all the indices are true and false wherever you have true that is uh, uh, that means these these values are present in x right so so x percentage sign in percentage sign and then this so this will give you the index of this value in x so how to do that so 
this will give you true false true false if you have a very large data then let's say if there are thousand uh, rows then it will give you thousand values like trues and false so wherever you have this value only that will be true and rest will be false but we are interested in finding out the exact location of this uh, this uh, point in that in x so we use the function which so if you use which for this it will give you the exact uh, location of that x which is 21 right so we created 20 uh, random values and we finally added 2.5 so of course this gets the 21st index right so that's what happens here so now what do we do with this uh, outlier that you need to discuss with the uh, domain expert or subject subject matter expert and a certain uh, whether it is too extreme, it has some value, or it is an error. So that you need to discuss with the subject. Now we'll look at the this topic skewness. So your data can can uh, have right skewness or left skewness. So right skewness is basically let's see if we can draw something here. So what we do is this is your uh, sorry I'm not a very <laughs> no not very good at drawing so this is your y-axis this is x-axis so data if data is plotted like this then this is called right skew because the data is skewed in the right direction right so right skewed because uh, so on the left side it is high and as you move towards right it flattens out right so it is called right skewed so this is what it is uh, and uh, we'll just erase this So let's look at uh, what we do with this right skewed data. So either you take this, uh, what you do is you lower the power of that particular variable. So if the variable is right skewed, then uh, you take the square root, cube root, or uh, log logarithm or reci reciprocal. So it could be this is square root, this is uh, cube root, this is logarithm, or one by x will become reciprocal, right? So if the data is uh, left skewed, like we just saw how, how it works, right? So again, we can draw one uh, uh, you know, graph for you to show what is the meaning of left skewed. So let me do that. So as you can see that, uh, you know, as you uh, move towards left, uh, the data point keeps rising above, you know. So on the left side, as you move towards left, it flattens out. So this is called left skewed, actually. Let me erase this. So what do we do with the left skewed data? What we do is we raise the power of the, of the variable. So we take the square, cube, etc., etc. So here is you, this is what you do square or so you do square cube or x to the power four. It go goes on like this yeah. until you get the right result. You keep raising the power and of course there's a limit to that also. But as you practice, you will understand. You know, as you get the work on real data, you will know how to handle these things in a best possible way. So thank you so much. I hope this uh, presentation has been. Uh, helpful little bit at least little bit helpful to to you has added some value to your knowledge in case you like this video please uh, like share and subscribe thank you